Good morning all. I hope you are well and welcome to this morning's video. So this morning I have two pairs on watch and those are pound Swiss and dollar Singapore. My little hedge play dollar Singapore still on the cards at the moment. We shall see if that shapes up. But my favorite of the bunch is pound Swiss. So why am I looking at pound Swiss? Well, this is about as simple as it gets really in terms of the way that we trade. Those of us who trade the Falcon strategy we have this high here. Okay. So we have the things that stand out to me on the daily chart is that we have this little consolidation here. We break below this low there, catch people on the wrong side of the market and then push to the upside. Okay. And then we have a separate structure after that break. We have this long sideways consolidation here. Okay. And the origin of the move, which is usually the stronger magnet, the price, the place that price will usually gravitate back towards the more attractive area of value is here. So the origin, the start on the upside of all of this is here. So we do gravitate back towards that area. We The clue that we were likely going to, just to touch on it, is that we have a near miss to it here. We have another near miss to it here. So that often gives us a clue as to what, how attractive an area of value this is, because in a lot of cases, there is a lot of this is largely when when price goes gets close but and goes from the area without tagging it that's often there's often a lot of fomo in there okay <clears throat> okay so we see a lot evidence of fomo here we don't know we're not i'm not suggesting that everybody that sold here had fomo i'm sure that many people have their own entry requirements which are not fomo based fomo based but there would have been a lot of fomo here and here by people that were waiting for it to get to here and knew that they should have done they should have waited okay we gravitate back towards that area and then we get the three drives so i i just i spoke in previous videos about how we have a bit of an ending structure here what i mean by that is we have a move up which is just a corrective squeeze with no real structure to it strip no real structure to it at least on the daily chart, I'm sure there would have been on the lower time frames, but then we get this ending structure, okay? And we often see that just before we get to the area of value. Why? Probably FOMO once again. We have we do have an area of value here, not the most attractive one in terms of this overall move, but we have an area of value here. What happens? We near miss to it again, okay? So FOMO, there's lots of psychological reasons why these patterns that we look for occur but FOMO is one of the easiest ones to spot we have that high there we get close to it price sells off it comes back up why because the orders that were likely up here were dragging price up and the the orders that were being placed there were dragging price back up okay and then we have another a move that doesn't commit why probably because there's a high sat just above above this high okay which is the origin of the move which is usually where price will gravitate back towards okay so we see that ending structure here and as i said previously we have we have that structure there we have the middle section we can see the one two three it would look a bit more clear on the lower time frames and then we break above we break above the high people think oh it's going to go to the moon as i said yesterday many people would have been too zoomed in so they may not have even been aware that they're trading into the high. That's why we do top-down analysis, because then you don't end up getting long here and trading into a high. Um, and then we break above. Okay, People think that now this becomes support because it's broken above. But what we tend to see in the majority of uh, cases is that it just completely crashes to the downside. And you think well, you might think, well, that seems obvious. You know, It's so clear. Well, it's clear when you haven't got a load of shit on your charts. Do excuse my French. Okay. It's not so clear when you've got 15,000 different indicators on your charts. And if you've ever studied some of the posts on TradingView, you'll see that many people's um, charts resemble something out of Spider Man. Okay. Anyway, I digress. So you can see we've caught people the wrong side of the market here and we've completely capitulated to the downside. So what this looks to me, like at this moment in time, is an impulse correction continuation to push lower to potentially, because the impulsive legs tend to uh, replicate themselves in terms of impulsivity. So what I mean by that is if we have an impulse and a correction, usually the continuation leg will mimic the length 
or the um the the length of the preceding impulse which would take us down to here which makes contextual sense because this low okay is the retest or would be the retest or did retest rather that high there and those high there highs there okay so that makes contextual sense okay so these are mathematical although i do these rather crudely they're um mathematical patterns okay they're not exact so you don't need to be too exact with them um but we have the consolidation there and it seems likely to me if i was a seller and i was swing trading this where would i be looking to get out of uh, my trade uh probably down here or this area here so i've got my arrow there just because even if we did carry on down to there this is a place where i would anticipate deeper pullbacks i would have anticipate profit taking okay people getting out of their positions and even if we did continue i would expect people to be getting out of their positions which would likely cause some kind of sideways correction and you don't always know how deep that's going to be even if it does continue so it's better to um take profit and reconvene so if i just drill down you can see here this is this is really textbook stuff, folks. This is a, a perfect example of how we trade. Okay, so what happens here? We have this high here that I was looking at. But what happened? How did we get there? We got there correctively. But what happened? We wicked to the area and not through it. What usually happens when we wick to an area and not through it? We usually, especially if you, we can kind of see the consolidation on the daily chart, although it's not a a higher time frame liquidity point as such we can see the structure what normally happens is we come down and we come back up to fill the wick and to fill it by way of full bodied price action and often break above and then move to the downside and one of the reasons we might need to break above in this instance is because we may need to retest the back end of this which is set just above this before price can move to the downside now economic data i think it's employment claims or something has just come out of the uk literally 12 minutes ago and what i was anticipating given that the bigger players are not trading news is i was anticipating a little bit of a fomo move and what's happening here i thought to myself we likely won't tap this area we'll likely see a bit of a temporary sell-off and as i said that one of the reasons for that is that the bigger players who are making the money are moving the market they're not trading through news i i seem to recall last year there was some there was some data released by my forex funds of course they were up to all sorts but regardless of what they were up to they released they re they released statistics on the people that were funded with them and one of the statistics that i seem to recall was that um out of all of the people that trade through high impact news so red flag news there wasn't a single case of any traders being profitable that did that. Okay, so that tells me that it's not the professionals trading through news. And if it's not the tra the professionals trading through new news, we're more likely to see FOMO because that's typically something that affects people that are not trading professionally. Why? Because they think things like, you know, the market's going and without them, they fear of missing out. All these things, they're they're mistakes which plague people which are not profitable so it doesn't surprise me that we're seeing a temporary sell-off it also doesn't surprise me that we're seeing a temporary sell-off because usually if this was a three touch structure so one two three usually we see scoops between the touches like this okay and notice here there's not really a scoop so as soon as i saw price come up and i knew that there was news coming out um what i was anticipating i th i think what's more likely is something like this and then we get a bit, bit more depth and then we get a bit more of a scoop between the touches to give us that one, two, three. But we shall see. OK, and that would make contextual sense because if we just analyze the move down. OK, this is we have to remember what pair we're looking at here. This is pound Swiss. OK, this for pound Swiss is a very aggressive move with very little pullbacks. OK, so along the way down, we've not really built much volume. It's been very, very direct and not much volume built along the way so it doesn't surprise me or it wouldn't surprise me if we needed to consolidate for longer to generate the volume required to um propel or to to create the next leg to the downside if that makes sense so what i'm going to be looking going to be looking for from this pair today is the following it's not often i look for these but 
in certain circumstances I will. I'll be looking for um, a tap into the area of value. So there, okay, there's nothing above until one of the things we do when I'm looking for risk entries is I measure the range, okay? And you can see that we have a hook point up here. We have a sharp move up followed by a sharp move down. Now, if the sharp move up and the sharp move down is more than 50% of the height of this range away, and you can see it is, it's about 80%, 85 maybe 90%, then I'm happy to take a risk entry here because you're less likely to be. Let's try that again. You're less likely to be tagged in and tagged out. Okay. So I would look for, if we tapped into the area of value, I would look for a risk entry after a one hour rejection. Why I run one hour rejection? Because the structure of this is now visible to me on the four hour chart. So when the structure is visible on the four hour chart, my entry never goes lower than the one hour chart. Okay, that's the, the rules that are in place for me. And or I would look for a phase line break. So something like this, if we had something like this, which I could plot a, a trend line across like that, I would set an entry on the break. Okay, and then look to get short there. So that is um, pound Swiss. I've gone into a bit more detail, just because I have a bit more time. I have an alert set just below the area of value. If it does not trigger, then I will not be looking to place a trade. I will be targeting this low here for something in the region of 6.8%. Uh, now, a lot of this is dependent on risk to reward. So what I do is I would use the mechanical management tool, and, and that would just be a kind of a short trade, but it depends. If I had to have, have a wider stop loss for whatever reason, then I wouldn't actually be targeting this low. What I would actually do is I would target the next low, down here, it's it's more to do with pullbacks. You know what size pullback you're sitting, you're willing to sit through. I would actually, in these in this instance, target those lows if the risk to reward wasn't even five percent. And then I would measure from that's the wrong tool. I would measure from range to range, and then I would set the take profit there because we have a sharp move at the ninety percent area. So it depends on what size stop loss. In this instance, it depends on what size stop loss. Um, we get as to which low I'll be targeting, but that is, let's just get that back how it was. There we go. That is pound Swiss. Let's see what happens with pound Swiss. Okay. So I'm just going to save that, go on to, so that is my favorite pair. Now we have dollar Singapore. Okay. So if I just zoom out, so dollar Singapore, we can do this on the fly. We have, we have this sharp move up there, sharp move down. We come back to the area. We break above. We get a mini scoop double top, suggesting that there was a lot of interest there because we get a lot of orders in that area. We drop. Okay. And if we just zoom in, you can see here, yes, we do have a high there, but we have this standout high here. And we you can see that we've wicked through it. Okay, we did wick through it, not by a huge amount, but we wicked through it, not to it. And we also, when we drop down a little bit, you can we can see that we actually wicked through another high here. Okay, and um, notice these wicks. Of course, this candle isn't closed at the minute, hasn't closed because this is today's candle. But if we, when we have two wicks like this, there's a very good chance we're moving to the downside. Okay, now one of the clues why that might be the case is because we have a near miss to this low here, which may be taken out, as we've discussed. These near misses often get filled. Okay, you can see we've we've kind of broken just above there. We're getting some orders coming. Now, you might be thinking, well, this does look like a bull flag to push higher. Okay, and it could well be a bull flag to push higher. The reason I'm not looking for a, a long on that at the moment is DXY dependent. Okay, so if we just switch to the DXY, this is something that, that, that I've been doing more of in recent times rather than... Um, in the past so at the moment the dxy okay we we've had we've reacted from this area we have this scoop double bottom we've pushed up and now it looks it does look like a continuation to push higher which is why i said dollar singapore is a hedge play okay but we would usually need to see something like that okay more like that to build the generate the volume after such a big move to propel this to the upside okay and if you look at what we're doing at the moment that doesn't that doesn't look ready to me okay so we've had these little wicks there 
we're consolidating there. This is not typical to just do that and then blast to the upside. That That's not a typical sequence, okay? So what this might be, so we might be getting, you know, what I've just described, that a flag like that to the right, or what we might be doing, because you can see that we're consolidating on these lows, this might just be an impulse correction continuation to push lower to fill this gap, this gap here, because often these gaps get filled, and to fill this gap, this near miss to here, okay, to take us down to that area to then push to the upside, okay? So the DXY does not look ready to, to move to the upside yet, which is why even though we have this bull flag on Singapore, uh, dollar Singapore, I will not be looking to get long, okay? However, the DXY could, in the space of just one candle, just drop out, okay? And if it does, then dollar Singapore will likely just drop out. And with that, and I may be able to capitalize on a move to the downside, which would likely replicate the same level of aggression as we had on the way up. So we would likely move down with the same level of aggression. And if we did, we'd likely take out that low, which this low near missed too. Okay. So that's the logic. That's the thought process. And that is why I have an alert set just below this consolidation. Okay. And as I said, we have, we have to zoom out the higher time frames hold more weight. And we have, you know, we have these wicks there. We have these rejections of a high. So many of the bigger players might be thinking, okay, this is my signal, okay, because this is a bullish, although it's a bullish high test, it is a high test. Many people might be thinking, okay, that's my signal to get out of my position, which would cause price to capitulate to the downside. Okay, so with all that in mind, and you can see we may be, it may be happening, just starting to happen now. What I'll be looking for, I'll be looking for price to drop out. Okay, so I don't want to be involved in any trades here i want want to see a bit of a drop out below all of this structure okay i thought i just moved my alert there uh, i want to see a drop out followed by a correction afterwards and then that would be the confirmation that price isn't you know is just it isn't going to form a larger ball flag it's just dropped out the correction would likely be the banks and the bigger players stacking their orders and the correction would likely be probably form next to this little bit of consolidation here because price as i said tends to replicate itself so when i saw this little bit of consolidation i thought if we do drop out we might get a correction there which i may be able to get short um, within or on the break of depending on which sort of correction we we get and of course my entry requirements are here and then i would look to get short either on the break or within the correction and then there really really isn't any inflection points until all the way down to here. And what I would do in this instance, given that this would likely be a shorter term trade if we were um, given what the DXY is doing, because we have a sharp move here, what I would do, and it falls just above the 90% area where price can often uh, pull back deeply, is I would set a take profit there and I would trail my stop loss accordingly. And then depending on the size of the stop loss, we would have something in the region of about 7% to work with. So that is um, that is dollar Singapore. So that's my little hedge play. We shall see how these um, setups materialize. The other ones have just basically been invalidated again or need more time. So the market doing what it's done for a very long time, just consolidating and just messing around, chopping around. But it is what it is. I'm happy to wait for as long as is necessary for something to shape up. And of course, in the meantime, I am still analyzing my documentation and looking for ways that I can be more aggressive and can, you know, just looking for subtle little details, which, you know, would help me to improve and to take entries in a slightly different way. We're all students of the market. None of us get to a point where we we know everything. We can't know everything because many of the people that are trading don't know what they're going to do until the moment that they actually do it. So how could we possibly know everything about the market? But anyway, before I go down that rabbit hole, I shall bid you a great, great rest of your day. And of course, if I do place any trades on either of these pairs, then I will, will of course, update you accordingly. Have a great rest of your day and I'll speak to you again soon.